It's real stuff here. This isn't just some sort of ceremony, but this is like real, meaningful, life-altering opportunity and beginning for their lives. And so we normally have a bunch of them up here. We've got two tonight. They must be special if we're just doing two of them, right? All right, I won't even announce it. I won't ruin it. Here you go. So please welcome our first graduate, James Bailey. And our second graduate, Robert Johnson, AKA Old Man Stan. Okay. Um, hey, come on over here, Stan. Right in the middle. We're going to showcase you. It ain't the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Um, yeah, and I've seen a lot of fight out of this guy. So I, I just want to say first and foremost, you know, how, how honored it's, I am and we all are to, to serve you guys and everyone. But um, I've been through a lot of storms with you, Stan. I've known you for years and I've seen a lot of fight and, and James as well. Um, I met you at that little downtown Hilton that, uh, <laughs> so, so um, I've seen you guys battle, which gave me the scripture. I'm going to share a scripture, then let you guys talk, and then we're going to go ahead and pray. And um, I just really want to share this on my heart as I thought about all the battles and storms you went through. And Pastor mentioned that. Pastor mentioned it briefly up there, which I, I was kind of shocked. Um, in Mark chapter 5, chapter 4, I'm sorry, 38, says, Jesus himself was in the stern asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, shh, be still, peace. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? So I say that to say this. You know, I've seen you guys go through some storms, and all of us go through storms. And there's a place in that scripture that um, I, I feel is just uh, timely for both of you very timely. Not only did Jesus deal with that, the Bible says that our fight is not against the flesh and blood. Um, Jesus rebuked the unseen. He rebuked the very thing that was causing the scene to be so disruptive. He handled the unseen before he dealt with calming and releasing peace on the natural. And so often what everyone sees in us when we go through the fights and the challenges um, are the natural things that we, we display and the pains and the hurts and what comes out sideways. And we never hate the person, we love the person, we hate the spirit that's behind it. We hate the unseen that's causing so much damage and destruction. But there's something even greater behind this scripture that I wanna just release to both of you, that there was a place in this where during the gale and the storm that Jesus slept. And when he said it was finished, he meant it was finished. And there's a place moving forward in every storm that you're to grab a hold of that peace and literally rest in that. And as you go through challenges and storms and you're able to just rely and rest in the bosom of Jesus through the storm, there's gonna be those around you because see, Jesus expected the disciples to know what to do because he'd been showing them. He woke up and said, basically, you guys know what to do. Been there, done that, seen me. Didn't even need to wake me, you should have handled this. And there's going to be people around you as you stay connected to the body of Christ and where you're at, that in the midst of the storm, you're going to rest, and those around you are going to get up, deal with the unseen, and release peace on the scene. So I just want to share that, and that's for maybe me too tonight. So um, who wants to go first? Come on, stand. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to the Lord for, for bringing me back here to the house. When I say the house, I mean both the Harvest House and the Harvest Tabernacle. I've uh, been around here going on almost 15 years now, in and out of the church and in, in the house. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Jim and Sister Peggy for having a, a, a dream to build a place for people like me to come in out of the storms, to, to get a, a hold of the Lord again, 
and have a new life, a good life. Uh, I, uh, this is not my first time graduating, but I didn't have to get up here last time they just gave us a, <laughs> a graduation certificate. I was kind of nervous tonight. Uh, you know, I want to tell you guys and, and the ladies, you know, don't, don't, I'm 61 years old standing up here getting this graduation certificate. Don't wait till you're 61 years old standing up here taking, taking this graduation certificate. Get on with your life. Get with the Lord. Listen to him. Follow him. I, uh, you know, I've been through a program, and I, and I got out, and I lasted for about a, oh, a week here just about a year ago. And uh, after that first week, I was isolating myself, and I found, caught myself after the first week going and getting a beer. And that turned into, you know what? <laughs> the third week, I called Tucker. And I said, Tucker, I said, I got having problems. I can't leave it alone. He says, <clears throat> go on to detox and call me and I'll come and get you. And he did. And I came back. Tucker welcomed me in here and welcomed me back. And I've been here now for about 10 months. And uh, I just want to say, no matter how hard it gets, and no matter what's going on in your life, there's a song that, that, that Daniel, a uh, group Pastor Dan does, that uh, God will make a way out of no way, and he will do that. If he's done it for me, he'll do it for you. There was a lot of things that I wanted to say coming the last couple months, coming up to stand right here, seeing other graduations and what people say, but then I went on this encounter thing, and a lot of, a lot of things changed. Come on, guys. All right? Um, listen, um, the where I came from, and I've said this a couple times over the past couple of weeks, is um, growing up, growing up I had a lot of guilt and shame and hurt in my life, and the way I dealt with that is turned all of my emotions off, turned everything off, turned everything off, and uh, that protected me, protected me from the hurt and the shame, but it didn't allow me to feel joy and happiness and express myself to other people, to receive love, to receive everything, anything. I had pride, I had, I wanted Casey to put my picture up on the screen, he said my ego and pride was too big, you know? So uh, I was just, I was shot, and um, I ended up at the Sarasota Hilton there to see, see Jim. I was, uh, Jesus got me arrested, going to the Skyway Bridge to jump off. I was gonna jump. I had, uh, I was shot, I was done. My life was over, everything was taken from me, every person in my life, everything was taken over, taken from me. And in, uh, in jail, I got that jailhouse religion, but you know what, I got out of jail and I stuck with it. And um, a couple things happened in my community control and um, I had needed a place so I got on my knees and uh, Jesus had my good friend Troy call me just out of nowhere and say, come to harvest. I come to harvest and I stand for like two hours and John comes driving up, says, what are you doing here? He's trying about ready to boot me off, I think, right? <laughs> and uh, so he tells me to get in and from there on, you know, I just, I, it was like, it was like a prayer answered. It was like, there was, there was some speaking into my life from God and I'm blessed that I got to see that, that I realized that, that that I made the connection because that allowed me to, to seek people like Jim and Tucker and, and Daryl and Dan and everybody, Pat, man, you too. Everybody at the Harvest House, everybody here, everybody in this church, Aaron, everybody, everybody in this church, they all have given me some piece of Jesus, some piece of God. Whether you know it or not, you know, you've all shown me something, you know, and, um, and that's where my blessings are. That's where my blessings are, seeing all this happen. So if I have to say anything to the ladies or to the guys, I'll say just open your arms and receive. Just allow yourself to feel love. That's it. That's it. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to pray for these two. John, you want to come down here and lead us in prayer? 
It's been on my heart for John to really just bless. He knows both of you real well. And um, so if everyone could stretch their arms out. Before we pray, I just want to quickly say I, I was playing with my daughter earlier and uh, we were roughhousing and she was beating me up pretty good. She was jumping off the bed and and uh, punching me and running around the house. And so I said to her jokingly, if you don't stop, I'm going to smash you. And and she said, no, you won't do that, Papa. I said, oh, yes, I will. She said, Papa, you would never do that. And I said to her, well, Maggie, why do you say that? Why do you say I would never do that? And she said, because you're my daddy and you love me. And I thought to myself, how much more? <laughs> you know, I just thought, how much more? It just kind of actually wrecked me. And I just thought, how much more does our Heavenly Father love us? That he would never bring anything evil against us. And so I just want to pray over these guys. How much more, Jesus, do you love Stan and James, God? That you would drag them out, Father God. That, that you saw something in them, Jesus. That they're your children, God. And so, Father God, we just bless them, God. We want to seal this deal, Jesus. We just ask, Father God, that from here on out, their steps are ordered, Jesus. That you would be with them, Father God. That you would guide their steps, God. For Stan, Jesus, that it's never too late. He may be 61, God, but the best years are ahead of him, Father God. And for James, God, that the gifts and the abilities you've given him, God, it would be used to expand the kingdom, God. That hopes and dreams and visions that died when he shut off his emotions, God. That, that like a child, those things would begin to activate in his life again, that he would dream again, Father God, and that you would grant those things, Jesus. We bless them, Father God, and, and in your name we pray. Amen.